cool afternoon at the stadium field at Darien High School for some girls varsity field hockey on the DAF Media Network as the 15-0 Darien Blue Wave hosts the 8-6 Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. Hello, everybody. Dylan DeRiso alongside Kari Johns. Kari, glad to have you as always. And Darianne, there's their last regular season game of the year, hoping to cap it off 16-0. and That would be huge for them going into the playoffs. Yeah, this team has worked very hard. Um, we've talked a lot. They have, um, you know, we have a lot of field hockey players rather than athletes who play field hockey. It made all the difference in the world this year. We have several college commits, both Division three and Division one, and so it's a really exciting to watch them come together and, and really prepare themselves for postseason. Certainly, Darian coming off a couple notable wins. New Canaan, that one three nothing, and Greenwich as well, that one two to one. They also beat Danbury a couple games ago, ten nothing. That was a blowout. Yeah, the the Greenwich game was a tough one. They actually um, Greenwich had scored first, so it first ever having to come from behind. Um, and you know, trust in the girls, they did well. Um, and uh, got it together the way they needed to to pull out a win. Ball. It's Casey Benoit attacking down the right side. She finds Kate Bach. Darren's going to be in their whites going on your screen from right to left. And Ludlow in blue. This little battle there happening on the field between uh, Captain uh, Ryan Hapgood. As well as Grace Fulham, the junior from Fairfield Ludlow. She's got a twin sister on the team. Here's Massey. She'll look down to Raina Johns. A lot of pressure room is trapped there by Johns, but uh, it's recovered by Kira. Uh, I'm going to have to get the last name so I know them. <laughs> I can see them <laughs> from Lorian. Here's Savino now. Katie Savino looking down to Stockdale. Now Stockdale to her sister. That one gets by her. Tipped by Bach. Here's Wilkes down. She'll pull it away. Now looking across to Hapgood. That one intercepted. Whistle blown. They'll give it to Ludlow. It was a little crowded down below the uh, five-yard line, so she's just trying to pull it out to create space. Now Ludlow. It's that straight to Benoit. Up to Stockdale. Intercepted. Now a battle for it. It's Ashley Stockdale looking across. Kick save made. Whistle blown. They'll give it back to the Falcons. First save for goalkeeper, I believe that's Mia Cassioni in goal. It could be Matilda Nichols, but I believe it might be Mia. I believe it's Cassioni, yes. As here's Kate Bach looking back to Benoit. If anyone's watching, we call her Mia Monster while she's in there. <laughs> <laughs> now Wilkes making a move towards the inside. Cassioni comes out, makes the stop, turned away as Flynn tries to get rid of it. He'll give it back to Ludlow now. Up along the sideline. Fails to break through Darian line of defense. Back to Dogovitis. Now Morgan Massey. She'll turn the ball back upfield looking for Benoit. That one off the front of her stick. Still chasing after it though. Retains possession over to Stockdale. Looking across the middle towards Hapgood. Whistle blown and they'll give it to Fairfield Bublo once again. Now quick off the restart looking for Booth along the outside. She's pressured by Stockdale. Yeah, Sarah Booth, experienced player. She's been on varsity for a few years now. I believe she should be a junior this year. Yep. Um, Savino. Great ball by Savino sent through. Wilkes on the attacking edge of the top of the circle. Nice little dish pass there. She's trying to find Stockdale. And Stockdale fighting it back. Captain Mazio trying to get that away in that ball. Just Quick shot and yeah. a goal. I believe that's Kate Bach to finish it off for Darianne, and they've got the 1-0 lead early. Bach, the sophomore, had two against New Canaan. There she is, yeah, just a little backhanded, little backhanded shot there. Nice little shovel. Smart, smart one time. Um, you know, sometimes you can get your stick on that ball real quick, and it's not expected, especially with her back to the goalie. Sarah Booth again, trying to find her teammate. Savino now over to Massey. Morgan Massey out to Dogovitis. She'll survey. Changed her mind over to Johns. Johns cutting back. Looking up. Great all the way to down Bach. to Kate Bach. Here's Bach and Hapgood. Looking across to Hapgood. Ryan Hapgood mm -hmm. loses it. It's kicked away by Cassoni. 
Nice save by Cassoni, unable to um, just track that ball down, but that was a great ball. That's what you're going to see Johns do a lot of. She finds those penetrating leans to be able to send the ball down 75 yards down the field to be able to find her attacking uh, teammate. Here's uh, Benoit. Now looking across towards Hapgood. Hapgood trying to fight it back. She can't turn it away. Now Booth will turn it upfield. Yeah, a little bit of change. Hapgood's usually on the right side. She's on the left today. It's just a new position for her. Um, here's Johns once again with that ball that we were just talking about. Find the lanes to find her attack player. And if you take notice on the field, Darian's got a 7v4 advantage. Chop from Wilkes. That one saved by Cassoni off to the side. Now Stockdale off the restart gets deflected, whistle blown. She was inside the 25 yard line and that ball inside the 25 yard line has got to be um, carried five, five yards um, and or passed to a teammate prior to making circle entry, so. Um. Now here's Booth. She'll look up, intercepted by Johns. Johns cutting back, a hard pass to Benoit. That one gets through her stick. It looks like Maddie, um, by the way she's running, Maddie Vio on the sideline, if that's number 15. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bach, that one hit off her head, it looked like. Yeah, too bad. Yes, it came off of the, it came off Ludlow's stick and then bounced into Bach, so creating danger on that pass, or um, stop. Here's Benoit on the right side. Um, once again, you'll notice she's outside the 25, so she can go directly into the circle. She's at the 30-yard marker, so I believe the official's calling... Oh, um, lifted ball. That one gets through to Letty. Turn back. Here's Benoit. Looking to Stockdale. She's able to recover it. Now Ashley Stockdale down to Tori, her sister. Just a lot of pressure there. I believe they'll give it to Darianne. Yeah, they'll get it. The first, yeah, first APC. So first attack penalty corner. Um, we'll have... Probably Stockdale, Ashley Stockdale on the insur insertion or injection. And then you'll look for two castles up top, usually with Blake Wilkes and Randy Johns or Casey Benoit to take the shot. Cassione just making sure her defense is set. The play can't start until the goalie. Sets into her position. Now Stockdale. She'll look up to Wilkes. Wilkes a quick shot. That one deflected out of bounds off of Darianne. So oh, just I guess off of Ludlow actually. Yeah, it looks like he probably his conferred mind. with his, his um, co-official who has a, another view from this side. So must have seen something different. So Darian trying a direct shot on that first one. Let's see on the second if they change things up a bit. Stockdale to insert once again. Up to Wilkes. Wilkes, another shot. Back down to Stockdale. Cassoni's on the ground. The shot stopped twice. Hapgood had a shot as well. They'll give it to Randy Johns up top. Johns. Nice shot on Cassoni, and that ball just went a little wide. Now Booth taking her time, trying to get it down the sideline, hit off of the leg of Stockdale. No give back to the Falcons. She's about halfway through this first quarter. Darian leading one to zero. Fulham will look back. Cagnasola sent that all the way down. That'll go out on the Darianne end. Savino to restart from the 15, the 16. Ava, Kaz I'm not going to try to pronounce her last name. <laughs> she's, just a, she's just a sophomore, so plenty of, plenty of growth left in this team as well. Um, you have the two Fulhams that are um, Grace and Emma, who are um, juniors, twins, who are um, very um, new to the game, but great athletes. Tori Stockdale sending a ball in. That okay, Bach the shot, that one out. And they will 
Give it to Ludlow. Take another look. Almost had the deflection from Wilkes. Yeah, just a just missed ball there. Sending over to Fulham. She's going to find Booth. And it's good stop there by good stop there by um, Stockdale. Tory. Now back to Savino. That one just out of reach. Savino is able to recover. Turn it back. Yes, yeah, Savino just had a nice change of direction, but then just a little miscommunication there when she was trying to get the ball to Stockdale. So it'll be restart. Fulham will start it in the back. Wait, where's the ball? Oh, there, I see. And Ava Casagnoli is interestingly playing a defender. There's Johns. She'll look up to Wilkes. Off the stick. Taken away by Cagnasola. And out off of Ludlow. Here's Benoit to bring it back in. She'll look down to Wilkes. Wilkes spinning back towards the middle. Now Benoit towards Bach on the inside. That one off the foot of Bach, I believe. And they'll give it to Ludlow now. Panico. Little back and forth. Benoit comes out with it. Deflected. Whistleblown, they'll give it to Darianne. Casey Benoit now on the restart. She'll go with the aerial over the top towards Hapgood and Bach. Great stop by um, Masoni. They'll give it to Ludlow. Yeah, Casey's great with those overhead throws. Um, we've got a few players on the team that can make those. You can pass generally the first line of um, opposition and then hopefully maybe even two. Um, the key to those, they have to drop into space and they can't be into two players or someone is not able to run into it, creating danger. Booth was looking towards the inside, intercepted by Stockdale. Darian's going back the other way. She makes two moves. She and looking for Bach. Yeah, she earns that corner by finding a foot there. So it looks like Benoit's going to insert. Johns Wilkes. Stockdale with the top. Stockdale squared. One <laughs> <laughs> backing up. And that ball goes to Will. Wilkes. Johns. Johns. Johns looking across just by the stick of Stockdale. Looks like that was just a misread on the attack. Um, who that receiver should have been. That space was pretty open. Um, And Ludlow trying to clear the ball out of their defensive. They've been under pretty much pressure from the <laughs> from the beginning whistle. I don't recall the ball crossing the Darien defensive 25 just yet. So um, just one goal, but being well defended by um, the Ludlow defense. Ashley Stockdale now finds her way around. Coming upfield, gets stopped by Cagnasola. And Ludlow will keep it. Cagnasola for the restart as well. She'll look for the aerial. Knocked down by Stockdale. And it's going the other way. Now here's Wilkes. Blake Wilkes across to Bach. Wasn't the first one to it, but she was still able to get on the ball. Now Bach cutting to the outside. A shot. That one out of bounds. Yeah, wide tough, right. Tough angle. Tough angle down there below the five. You've got to just catch it just right. Usually if the goalie's hugging the post, it's a little hard to get that angle. So um, daring offense. Knocking at the door, but not finding an answer. <laughs> no one's opening yet, so. Masoni's doing a great job. Um, really well defended. Now Booth deflects off of her stick. Savino will take it for the wave. Looking across to Johns. Johns was trying to get that one downfield. Whistle blown. All right, we're looking at just 90 seconds remaining in first quarter play. Darian leading by a score of 1-0. Um, opportunities have been in the attacking circle with, uh, I believe, three APCs at this point. John's doing a spin move, sending that ball into the circle. Hapgood had a chance to finish. Save made Cassoni. 
Trying back towards the middle. Stockdale stepping up. She'll pull it away from the pressure. Looking to find that APC, and she does. She tried that backhanded shot off, uh, back footed shot, and just was under a lot of pressure. The defense doing a good job there, but um, and she realizes, you know, a little foot uncovering and <laughs> finds that to get the APC here again. You're up numbers, as you can see, there are eight offensive players in, generally to the four defensive players and goalie. So if you find the right angle, this is a great opportunity to score. I think the percentage is around 30. 5% scored on APCs, attack penalty corners. Could be but off on that number. <laughs> Benoit to insert with 35 to go in the quarter. Up to Wilkes, down to Johns. Raina Johns looking, save made. Cassoni, rebound. Now Stockdale trying to take it. Yeah, looking for the call because it was off that. Um, off of the, she sends that ball in. Johns also looking to get a corner, which she does to end the quarter. So. Um, with time running out, Darien's going to be able to pull all of their players up. So this is a great opportunity for the Darien offense, pulling all 10 players up to the circle. The way this works is the clock will tick down. Um, either a goal will be scored. If it doesn't clear, there aren't hashes that you can see, but there's five yards outside the um, circle. If the ball doesn't clear the hashes and it continues to be another corner, we'll just continue play on. Benoit sends it to Wilkes. Wilkes will take the shot herself this time, deflected and in. I believe uh, looks that was like he's calling a 16-yard hit, so it looks like it ah. possibly went wide. Girls look like we're celebrating, but official holding his hands out. There he goes. Okay, there he's, <laughs> he's calling the goal. It looks like he wanted to confer with his co-official. So a good goal for Darianne to end the quarter. 2-0 our score. Here's a replay. Take one more look at this. There we go, yeah. You probably just need a by Hapgood, Captain Ryan Hapgood, getting her stick on the ball and just sliding it past the um, second post of Masoni. So at the end of 1-2-1, 2-0 two, one, two our score. We'll be right back here in just a moment on the DAF Media Network. Back here live on the DAF Media Network, our score 1-0 after the first quarter. And Kari, a little 
bit of confusion at the end there with that attack penalty corner. Why don't you walk us through what your thought process was? So I'm still slightly confused as well. So, um, oh, I see. I think I see. Can, is there any way to rebind that just a bit? It looks like the ball actually didn't leave the circle altogether. So on an attack penalty corner, the ball has to come outside of the gray circle and then come back in, touching an offensive stick inside the circle. So it looks like, uh, ooh, just had it right there. It looked like from our point of view, but of course the officials are making real-time decisions, and so it's very close. Let's take a nice look at it here. So if it crosses that gray line, which it does, um, so maybe just, you know, it's difficult. We've got this great instant replay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get to see it a few times. So that's the reason the goal was called off. Officials uh, didn't actually see that leave the circle. Um, so we are off in the second quarter of play as Benoit was looking on the back side, I believe that was Turner. Just missed it. Oh uh, yeah, Lindsay Turner subbing in on the in the match. Also, you have Caroline White, um, number sixteen, I believe, on the right side. Um, still Benoit. Uh, looks like Ruthie Miller, captain, has also entered the match as the center forward. Benoit to Stockdale. Spins across back to Benoit. Now carrying towards the middle, looking up. There was a window, but nobody was home. Yeah, fantastic. That's a fantastic ball. You want to try to get that ball not on the same line every time. So she draw baseline. Um, uh, that Meg Mazio just getting past Johns. And now nice pass sending through to looks like Katie Letty. So Ludlow in their attacking circle for the first time. See if they can make anything of Oh, and it finds the foot of uh, Ludlow player so John's going to hit that ball immediately out um, it's lifted creating danger so now Ludlow having another opportunity inside their attacking 25 it's Captain Mazio sending it out to Ava Casagnoli looks like Sarah Booth coming around for the ball she lifts just over the stick of Sockdale and able to get a ball inside the circle and attack penalty corner called for Leather. So this will be the first big opportunity for the Falcons in this one. Darian's been pretty dominating so far on offense. Even though they've only had one goal, they've had plenty of opportunities. Now Ludlow's going to have their chance to tie things up. We'll see. Darian's only given up four goals this entire season. That is certainly impressive. I have a defensive unit of um, Benoit, Johns, Savino, and Massey. The outside across the middle, multiple Ludlow players went for that ball. And none of them got to it. And of course, goalkeeper Lindsay. Uh, who's going to Haverford, by the way? We mentioned, uh, we had mentioned the collegiate players that are going on. Um, uh, Darby heading on, Darby and Turner, both Lindsay's heading off to Haverford to play some field hockey. Um, we have Brooke Bilodeau who will be heading to Hamilton. And then as far as field hockey is concerned, Raina John's heading to Dartmouth. Um, Ashley Stockdale heading to Duke and um, Blake Wilk heading to Cornell. And then for lacrosse, of course, we have Morgan Massey heading to Cornell, Casey Benoit heading to Syracuse. We just threw that nice aerial ball. It'll go back in favor of the Falcons. Does so sports really proven to um, be a an opening door for <laughs> for collegiate? <laughs> Certainly. That ball just slipping under Caroline White's stick, but going out of bounds on the Falcons, so Benoit's going to take it on the right side in. Sends the ball in the center of the field, finding Stockdale, but missed trap there, so Casagnoli's going to pick that ball up and look to find Kira. Lorian. Massey finding Johns. John sweeping a ball over to Benoit. And the waiver on the attack again. Stockdale now. Coming down when it looks across. Shot but taken, rebound great save, by two Miller. Saves. Multiple saves made by Cassoni. She's really responded to the call here. The first save she's made and then the second save, which is really, again, all you can ask. Now the defender sent that over the end line on purpose, and so that's going to be an attack penalty corner. 
Benoit to insert for the wave. Benoit insert to Johns. Johns with a slip left. Now Looks across like looking for the tip on the backside. Finished yeah. by Ruthie Miller, the captain. So it was the same play Johns had tried to execute before and didn't find a receiver. But this one, Ruthie Miller was right in the pose where she's supposed to be and makes connection and puts it in the back of the net. Now Darian's able to go up 2 nothing after that. Officially. Mm -hmm. After that last <laughs> attack penalty corner. And Ludlow in a two-goal deficit now. A lot to dig themselves out of, especially with the strength of this Darien defense as well as attack, which seems to put constant pressure on their opponents. Throughout the season, we've seen it in almost every game. Darien seems to be the offensive team far more than 50% of the time. Yeah, again, I think it scales back to, you know, we've always had, um, you know, a, a competitive team that's um, had athletes that have played field hockey. This, I think, would be our first year where we have several field hockey players um, that make it, it makes it a different game. Just the understanding of the way the ball moves, the, the spaces. Um, of course, we love multi-sport athletes, but having someone who knows how to you know, play this individual game is, is really important, key when it comes to uh, executing. Certainly. So Lund's going to have a side in. Looks like that's going to be Maddie um, Villoy, Villoy, sorry, <laughs> trying to say that wrong. And that falls into traffic, so Benoit's going to have it on the sideline. Or send the ball back to Dogavis. Chian Dogavitis up to Benoit. Benoit across to Johns. Now right at Johns will look towards Stockdale. That one was bouncing. Found its way to Ruthie Miller. Now Miller coming across. Looks down. That one got stopped. And turned the other way. Savino's there. Savino over to Benoit. Benoit will carry. Lots of open field in front of her now. Benoit looking across to White. That one kicked away by Cassoni. Darian will take it from up top. Stockdale from the 25. Turn back, Dogovitis was there. Here's Miller. Miller gets stopped and it'll go Ludlow's way. So Lolo doing a superb job keeping their six down in the circle and not allowing any more than two goals thus far, even though the possession has been, for the most part, inside the attacking 25. Um, so really stepping up the defensive game here. Savino looking for a teammate. Now quick off the restart. Caroline White able to get her stick on that, but there's Maddie Puyo again, and Caroline White still pestering her just a bit to get the ball away. <laughs> Puyo. She'll take her, take her time passing that one up. It got deflected, found its way to McGowan. Doug Vitus now up to Benoit, down to White. Stockdale. She'll pass it back to Johns. Raina Johns will carry. Looking all the way down. That one stopped. And turned back the other way. Gets by her though. So Darianne will retain possession. Benoit on the sideline looking for um, teammate Ashley Stockdale or Caroline White possibly down the Sideline, not able to find anyone, so it's going to be a 16-yard hit coming out for Lando. And Vu trying her hand at the aerial ball. Gets tracked down by Johns. Johns finding a seam into the circle. Now a cross shot. 
that ball by Lindsay Turner. Yeah, changed hands about three times and finally found its way to the back of the boards. Turner putting Darianne's third goal of the game on the board. Way to have her shoulder just ready towards the net and yep. able to make that one touch there. Just under six minutes to go in the half as Stockdale's able to steal the ball away, pass it to her sister, and then over to Benoit, Casey Benoit. Looking down to Ruthie Miller. Miller there. She cuts across. Miller trying to get a shot. Ends up Turner on a stick of Turner. For a Kicked away by Cassoni. Now Villa going the other way. That one out off Benoit, if I'm not mistaken. And Benoit up to Miller. Great hit by Vio. That'll go all the way down. Yeah, unfortunately no one there. It's a great penetration pass or hit, but no one there to receive. So um, Lelo possibly having an opportunity here within their, uh, even though Darian in possession, they're still inside their attacking 25 if they can keep the ball here. But Darian, um, oh, there we go. A nice stop by Matty Vio. And for those folks of you at home, that is not a goal. That ball was um, shot outside the attacking circle and needs to be touched by an offensive stick inside the circle, not a defensive stick as well. Massey finding Stockdale, sends it out wide to Benoit. Benoit trying to connect with Stockdale again. Stockdale looking for another pass. Now Stockdale up to Miller. Ruthie Miller coming across. And Miller gets the foot inside the circle. They'll give it to Ludlow. Panico on the restart up to Villa. Villa looking for one of those hits, I would imagine, again, trying to get the ball out of danger here. <laughs> so silent for a while at 1 0. Darian putting two quick goals in. Um, ball's going the other way again. It can't be into traffic, so that was into two players. John's going to take the Quick restart, um, just under four minutes remaining, first half. Ariel to Benoit. Stockdale makes a move across up to White. That one out of reach and out of bounds. We'll go back Ludlow's way. Good look on Benoit, but just no receiver there. No, I thought they had the ball, sorry. It's Lindsay Turner making a nice little Interruption of play. And Booth can't contain that on the side end, so it's going to be sideline. So it's going to be Savino with a quick restart. She sends the ball in, and Stockdale going to do a quick restart, and that, yes, is a attack penalty corner. So let's go over that rule. Inside the attacking 25, every player, both offensive and defense, need to be five yards away from the player who has the ball. Um, and if the defense makes an attempt to influence the player, player which she did as Stockdale took the quick restart, that's a attack penalty corner inside the 25 yard line. Benoit to insert for the wave. Looks like we're changing sides. Trying to, Darian trying to change things up a bit. Defense will switch in the, in the net. Still have the same four back and keeper, but we'll look to see where this ball goes to the top. Benoit inserting to Stockdale. Stockdale looking to find a tipper. Rebound. Saved by Cassoni. Mm -hmm. And there's Johns with the ball, finding another foot. Shot. Official holding the whistle for the goal to potentially be scored, which was, it looks like. And we're not going to be too sure. We're going to wait until, yes, and that would be a goal for yes. Terry. <laughs> Number four for the wave. The official was, he blew the whistle a few times at the end of the play. Seemed like there was possibly some confusion, but confirmed goal for Caroline White, the junior. So the official, you could see him holding up his hand for possession. Uh, there was a foot there, but they always give the opportunity, give you the advantage to score the goal. And if you actually do get a shot off, then that advantage goes away. But 
greater return would be the goal, which is what just happened. Looks like we have Emma, Emma fully making her way into the match, replacing Ava Casignoli. Casignola. Sorry, Ava, if you're watching. <laughs> And we'll have a sister sister connection on the right side. So we've got twins on the Darien side and twins on the Ludlow side. They always seem to find themselves on the field when they're playing <laughs> together. That's a great ball off the left foot of the defender by Captain Meg Mazio. Ball slips past Johns and you have Sarah Booth trying to find something, but Stockdale coming down to track that ball down and it goes Darien's way. Quick restart to Miller. Looks like a nice 3v2 if the execution can. Ball just sent ahead, White. Benoit came down with the shot. Looks like that might be Benoit who got that. Overlapping White on the right side. That one just got by White and Benoit was able to finish it off, putting number five on the board for Darianne with a minute and 11 to go in the first half of play. Casey's such a good athlete, Benoit. She just makes it look so easy. She just comes around, let me just Make contact with this mm -hmm. ball. <laughs> Turner again. Bunnett coming around for the ball. She'll be near, under immediate pressure. She's able to find her teammate, Stockdale. It's a nice pullback to eliminate, and then a nice little spin move. Now down to White. White trying to put in her second. That one saved. Off to the side by Cassoni. Love to see her save percentage for this match so far. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, the five goals for Darianne makes it seem like it's been pure goal scoring for the Wave. As there is another from White. Just as I was about to say, the what we've seen has has told a different story. It's it's taken a lot of shots for Darianne despite the high amount of goals that they've had. Now 26 seconds to go in the first half of play. White just, you could see that on the replay, just picture perfect. Casey finds her on the five yard mark, Casey Benoit, and White having her feet prepared, her body prepared, just makes the one time sweep into the goal. No time for a backswing there, and she was just ready for what was to come. Fully, I'm trying to get this ball out. Nice move there, little 3D work, and finding Booth in the center, stopped by Johns, and going Darian Way. Looks like the officials are having <laughs> a little bit of a disagreement. One's pointing one direction, one's pointing the other direction. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the half. Darianne, 6 nothing, up on the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. We're going to take a break. We'll be back here in a few moments on the DAF Media Network. Community service, schools, the police, often they come to us with ideas that we help them bring to fruition. The Darien Foundation recently awarded the Darien Police Department two grants. One was for LaserShot and the other for Faro technology. LaserShot technology is based on decision making. It may come down to using their firearm but in reality, we would like them to talk the situation down where you use less lethal force, and this program allows us to do that. Police dropped a gun! Ferro technology gives us a 360 degree view, catching all the points we need to catch in our accident scene. It also takes a lot less time. This allows us to open up roads, get traffic flowing a lot quicker than we ever used to be able to. We can also map the inside of buildings, we can use it at outdoor crime scenes, indoor crime scenes. It's really used for a plethora of investigations. It's a tool that most other departments may not have their hands on just yet. And thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have that 
technology. At Home in Darien is a nonprofit organization that helps senior citizens to remain living independently in their home and in the community. We provide important services to help them do so, such as transportation. Thanks to the Darien Foundation, we have this amazing new van, and we are so excited about it and what it'll do for the community. From all standpoints, this is going to be a real improvement in the services we provide, both in terms of safety and comfort. The Darien Foundation is important to the community in the scope that they reach out to answer needs. Post 53 is the town's ambulance service. We respond to over 1,600 emergency calls a year for a vital service that has been here for 51 years. The technology upgrades provided by the Darien Foundation has been a game changer for us. It's allowed us to improve our training. It has helped us hone our skills. You don't know how important an ambulance is until you actually need it. Thanks to our partnership with the Darien Foundation, who's provided all this technology and several grants throughout the years, we're able to continue to be prepared, to be well-trained and well-staffed, to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whenever you need it. The Darien Foundation is really excited to be able to launch a new program for the Darien schools, which will benefit students K through 12 in all seven schools. This is the new robotics program, which will be an extracurricular opportunity for students to build robots, compete against other leagues, and collaborate together. Our robotics program is going to benefit students in so many ways. Regular classes, students are always looking for the right answer, that there's only one way to answer something. Robotics is completely different. In robotics, you learn that there are multiple solutions to every problem. You learn that you have these obstacles that you have to overcome. You have to really be a creative problem solver. And most importantly, you need to persevere. Early on in the process, the Darien Foundation reached out to administration and the offer to provide funding for a project, and it just dovetailed beautifully to the goals of the strategic plan. I look forward to continue to work closely with the Darien Foundation, both on this project and other projects down the line. We welcome ideas for possible grants. We'd like to do grants that promote and strengthen our community. Sometimes it's from an organization, sometimes it's from our emergency service partners, or it's from the Darien Public Schools. One of our most popular grants, which was the Playground by the Sound, came to us from four Darien moms who said, let's get together and figure out how to build this. Thanks to the generosity of our board members and officers, every dollar you give to the Darien Foundation goes directly to the grants that we're supporting. I invite all of you to help us move our community further and support the Darien Foundation. We are DAF Media, Darien's hometown source for sports, arts, and entertainment, established in 2017. We are Community, a volunteer-based organization that gives nearly 50 Darien High School students hands-on experience in video production. We are Cutting Edge, a STEM initiative. Students use cameras, computers, sound equipment, and innovative software. We are live, streaming 120 events per year on our YouTube channel. We are on the stage. We are at the big games. We are on the field. We are in the gym. We are on the move, live streaming not only in Darien, but throughout southwestern Connecticut and the tri-state area. We are making a difference. We are DAF Media.
back for the second half of play here from the stadium field. Dylan DeRiso, Kari Johns, Darianne leads Fairfield Ludlow 6 0. And it looks like they've put back in some of the starters, Kari. Yes. I just got an uh, interesting piece of information. Um, with that goal, number six, Darianne has now scored 100 goals for the season. Oh, wow. How about that? I didn't and know that going in, you, but. For those of you watching at home, they've only given up four which means they're scoring 25 for every one that they've given up, which is Pretty quite good impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good hustle on Kate Bach, but she wasn't able to track that ball down on the sideline. So it's going to be Ludlow, Ludlow ball coming in, and George Flynn is going to be taking that from the sideline. George Flynn, just a freshman, athletic hockey player, ice hockey when I say hockey. <laughs> Kate Bach. Great uh, ball movement there, and uh, just miss on that last connecting pass all the way down from the side in here, all the way down, just that last pass connection missing. But otherwise, beautiful ball movement on the Darien uh, Blue Wave. So I'm sending the ball back, but uh, that is tracked down by Hapgood, who sends it right into Kasoni, who makes a great stop. And ball sent out for Maddie Vuyo. Vuyo. <laughs> 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 I always have trouble with last names. I always call them by their first names. There's Sackdale trying to earn something, but a good stop by Booth. That's an easy one. I can say that. Now Benoit down towards Massey. Or excuse me, Hapgood. There's a Massey's lot of all the traffic way back in there. The more shots. More saves. Tough to tell what's going on from up here. Whistle blown. They'll give it to Ludlow. Quick restart. Fulham is off and running. Ball going Darien way, and uh, Fish is going to just signal for to go into place of the foul. So uh, looks like Savino taking it out just a little bit wider. Just looking for the space on the field, so she'll drop that back to Massey. Maybe try to change the field, but it goes back to where it came from. Opposition anticipating that change of field, so a smart move on Massey's part. Nice takeaway there on Lodo, but... Um, Savina right there to track it down. She sends a ball into Johns. It doesn't quite make it. Johns able to find Benoit. Benoit with a one touch, then upfield. Looking down towards Bach. That one intercepted. Hapgood's able to get it. Up to Stockdale. Stockdale a shot. Saved. Rebound from Hapgood was saved as well and sent out by Ludlow. Savino runs down. As that was sent out of bounds by... Tough to tell Ludlow player on the far side. Did see who it was. Now Benoit down the sideline. She'll look up to Bach. Booth able to put a temporary stop on that. And good clear there. Looks like that was Kira making a sub. Finds a foot on Darien, but the ball will, there we go. It'll be uh, Ludlow's possession. And Maddie Villoy. <laughs> we keep trying to stop by Johns. Maddie making another stop there. She's under a lot of pressure on this uh, side, and she sends a ball into Benoit's foot, so that'll go for the Eagles. Vio to take it for Ludlow. Good little deception, finding Captain Magmazio in the back. Little stick interference, so that ball will go back to the Eagles again. Now Ludlow down along the side, Fulham looking up. Temporary stop by Savino, but looks like it goes Ludlow's way and they're going to try to get something generated here in a corner. Well done by the Eagles offense. I believe this is the second corner of the game for Fairfield Ludlow. They failed to convert on their first, they'll look Put one in here. So once again, we have Massey, Benoit, Johns, and Savino in as the uh, unit cameras? with um, senior goalkeeper. Um, I could probably do that. Lindsay Darby. Yeah. Oh, okay. Looks like Maddie Pio is inserting, and she's looking at the top two. 
Sarah Booth, who makes a slip left. That ball stopped by Johns. Sends it out to Hapgood Hap quickly. Good. Bach making a run down the field. Hapgood to Kate Bach. Bach across to Stockdale. Now Stockdale down. Looks like Billado on the back side. Shot. And they're going to give it to Ludlow. So Brooke Bellado subbing in, in the match. Uh, as we mentioned, she's attending Hamilton to play field hockey next fall. Restart here, Fulham. All the way back intercepted by Wilkes. Yeah, Wilkes getting caught up in the feet there of the Eagles, so it'll be a quick restart here by Stockdale. Stockdale down to Benoit. Benoit coming up with it. Over to Wilkes on the back side. Couldn't finish that, but. I think they called it a goal. Oh, they did call mm -hmm. it a goal. Looks like it. Here we go. Benoit sends it across. Wilkes there, yep, gets her stick on it and finds the back of the boards. Normally when I can't see the ball, I'll try to <laughs> think about the sound, but then I couldn't hear oh. it hitting the, uh, the back of the goal, so. That was a goal for any confusion. 7 nothing. Darian, our score. Now with 8.45, just a little under that to go in the third quarter of play. Billado over to Stockdale. Ashley Stockdale now. Looks like Allie Meyer is also subbed in the match. Is right back. She finds Benoit. Benoit looking inside to Stockdale. Just a little mistrap there and... Lindsay Perry had a nice pass, and now the Eagles looking to uh, track the ball down the right side in, but taken away from Katie Savino. She's looking to find Stockdale, who will look ahead to Bach. Turn and back the other way. Booth trying to fight for it. Good stop by Kira Lorian, the top of the circle for the Eagles. There's Magnazio looking for her teammate. She's going to go ahead and find Lindsay Perry. Can go past. Turned away. Hope Hapgood now. Down to Bach. So we twins, twins fire. and sisters. Hope and Ryan Hapgood on. And then, of course, sisters on the, or twins on the Eagles team and twins on the wave. A little bit more action here on the on the Eagles, but not quite able to generate full attack. Darian's still in possession, and they're attacking 25. Looks like Hope Hapgood's going to have this ball. Hope a sophomore. Um, young team on Darian's side as well. Plenty of growth to be made and plenty of um, depth here with these younger players. Now Ryan Hapgood makes a move inside, looking to White. Here's Sarah Booth. Doing some elegant stick work to work that ball up, but doesn't find an intended receiver. So we're going to go with uh, Hapgood on the side in again. Ryan Hapgood stolen away by a Falcon. Oh, Falcon, I'm calling them Eagles, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. I think I only noticed one of the times <laughs> that you called <laughs> that. It's easy, it's an F, so it should be fair. Uh, Fairfield Falcons, I can remember that. <laughs> Sorry, folks at home, for calling Eagles. Uh, no worries, no worries. Well, when I'm looking at the screen, it, mm -hmm. they look. I can't tell the eagle from the falcon in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Restart in the back from Magmazio. Sends the ball to Fulham, who uh, does find a foot. It's going to go their way again. Here's Ryan Hapgood. Coming all the way down. Gets a shot off. Save made. Rebound. That one out. And let's 
see who they give to here. Looks like they're going to give it to Darian. Hope Hapgood yeah, for the restart. Goalies pass. So it'll be a long hit coming out at the 25 where the ball went out of bounds. John's dribbling that ball right in, trying to find a teammate. And great save there. Good stop on the Falcons for the Falcons. Another long hit. Johns once again. Johns over to White. She'll pass it back to Johns. Almost stolen away. They'll give it back to, no, they'll give it to Ludlow. Johns not happy with that call. Ludlow quick off the restart. Wilkes coming in and around. Here's Lindsay making a pen. Lindsay Perry making a pass over. Picked off by Savino, looks like. Or Bellido. And ball sent in looking to find Kate Bach, who makes a fantastic pass. And good save by Mia Cassoni once again. Hapgood over to White. Back down. Hapgood trying to get a pass across to her sister. Didn't get all of it. Ends up back on the stick of Caroline White. White making some moves down low. Hapgood finding uh, the end line. Ball goes out of bounds off Falcon, and so it'll be another restart. Uh, looked like the official did signal a 25-yard. Now it looks like it's going to be 16. So Falcon's trying to get this ball out of their defensive end desperately, but they just are under the wave of attack from the Darien team. A few subs coming in. Looks like Lindsay Turner might be entering the match again. And oh, we have Annabelle Adams and Ruthie Miller entering the match. Darien. Utilizing the big lead to get some of the uh, younger players in for the last game, last regular season game that is of the season. And the pace we're on right now, Darian's likely going to come out with the win and cap off their season undefeated. 16-0 and would be their final record. Truly an impressive showing this season as a whole from the Wave. Yeah, it's a good place to be. It's a hard place to be. You know, everyone wants to try to hand you that first loss. So everyone, you always have a target on your back. Um, you have to be sharp. Um, you know, it, the FCAC is very strong this year. There are very strong teams competing for the title. So, you know, nothing's taken for granted. Every, every day any team comes out here, they should expect, you know, a, a hard-fought match. And um, the Darien Blue Wave has expected nothing less than that every time they step foot on the field. And you know, it's gone their way because they've been able to, um, you know, play well together as a team and, and really generate some, some good attack moments and, and defense as well. So far, Ludlow's looks like they'll be um, ending up in the eighth spot. So this might be a rematch on Friday, potentially. Don't quote me on that, folks, but that's what it's looking like. There's still some games to be played in the FCAC. John's in the middle of the field with the ball. Nice uh, slip pass over to Allie Meyer, who's very quick on that sideline. Stopped there by Lindsey Perry. And picked up by Bilodeau. We've not seeming to connect here now in their offensive 30. Meyer picking it up again. Annabelle Adams looking for her opportunity, and she finds a foot and an attack penalty corner. Oh. I thought the official blew the whistle. Sorry, folks. I Either I'm hearing the football whistles once again, or... Yep. That might be it. <laughs> Here goes another one. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Football players running sprints down on the stadium east field. Annabelle Adams, this little first such a redirect. Caroline White receiving that uh, rebound. Ruthie Miller under a little pressure. That ball's coming out. Yeah, dangerous swing and miss. So Lindsey Perry's going to pick that ball up. Pass to Sarah. Mm, no, it looks like it's Grace Fulliam. Perry just unfortunately with a miss uh, hit there. So we are 30 seconds remaining in first uh, th in third quarter play. 
Darian earning the obstruction there for Johns with the stick work and 22 seconds left in the third quarter. Johns looking gets blocked. She'll continue to chase after quick off the restart. Now making a move down, looking across. Can they finish it off? And another, looks like we're gonna finish this quarter again with another attack penalty corner. So Darian having the opportunity to bring all the players up once again. Oh, sorry, it looks like a penalty stroke was called. Raina Pardon. Johns will take it. Pardon me, folks. Now these are club teammates, so interesting to see if Mia remembers what happens here and if Johns can place it differently. Yep. Johns scores 8 nothing. Darianne. That'll bring us to the end of the third quarter as well as we'll take one more look at this shot from Rand Johns. Yeah, we've talked about this before. It's hard on the keeper. They've got to choose one way or the other and you see she chooses the opposite direction and John just finds the um, other side of the goal for the back of the boards. Brings us to the end of the third, eight nothing Darianne. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. DAF Media is actively seeking financial support. Founded in 2017, DAF Media has quickly become Southwestern Connecticut's source for quality sports, arts, and community programming. If you like what you see on the DAF Media Network and want to help us continue to deliver high quality broadcasts while teaching lifelong STEM, communication, organization, and leadership skills, please email us at sponsor at DAFmedia.org. We are a registered 501c3 organization. Back for the final quarter of play here. Kari Johns had to go. Had to go coach the JV girls field hockey team, which will be playing next. So Braden Shank and I will be taking you home in this one. Braden, glad to have you on. You've been directing the stream today, but it's a pleasure as always. First time I think we've been on the mic together this year, actually. I think so. Definitely not the last. Um, I definitely don't have the IQ level of Kari Johns in this great sport of field hockey, but uh, the two of us will bring you some ent entertainment here for the next 15 minutes and uh, get you ready for the FCAC playoffs for Darianne coming up later this week. Yeah, Kari and I were talking while she was still on the mic saying it is likely that this Ludlow team will end up being the eighth seed in the FCAC and possibly be coming back here on Friday to play Darianne once more in the FCAC quarterfinal. Yeah, it is indeed. They're sitting right now 6-6 six and six in the conference, and they're not going to pick up any points today, still at 12. So there's a chance that Friday night we'll see this rematch here, Darianne and Ludlow, with a chance to go to Brian McMahon on Tuesday for the FCX semifinals, which is going to be a good playoff this year. There's some good talent in the FCX, New Canaan, Wilton, Richfield, Staples, even Greenwich, who played this Darianne team tough. So it's really a good uh, group of teams that are going to be fighting this year and try to dethrone Darianne come next week. Certainly. Braden will be on the call for that game this Friday, I assume. Oh, it's actually, I'm doing next week. Got the two semis in the championship on DAF ah. Media. <laughs> Had a blast with those last year. Brian McMahon coming back to uh, Casa Grande Field. 
And of course, last year you got the heroics of Blake Wilkes coming up clutch in double overtime, putting the wave above New Canaan to win the FCAC championship. And of course, they fell short in the state tournament against Wilton, who they're going to look for revenge for. And, you know, come a couple weeks later, they might be looking for a state title this year. Absolutely. Yeah, this Darien team is certainly the team to beat. 15-0 on the year. It'll be 16-0 when this one comes to an end in a few minutes. And let's talk about that defensive strength, which I think a lot of it is courtesy of the offensive pressure. The offense seems to be so dominant every single game that they've only given up four goals this year. We haven't even seen a lot of the defensive players really come into use much. We we only see players like Savino and Dogovitis and, and Morgan Massey touch the ball a few times a game. And, and I think a lot of that can really attest to this. You can really attest the strength of the offense. Uh, it, it really helps in that in that defensive defensive power from the team as well. It does indeed, and I want to recall fans back to that Greenwich game which Darian played in which Darian gave up the first goal in that one to Greenwich. They had to play behind, and there's almost that sense of comfort that the defense has when you're playing defense and you have a lead up on the board and you know you can afford to give up a goal, and it really makes the defender feel better. And when you get an offensive power, Raina Johns, the Stockdales, Blake Wilkes, who can just keep putting goals up, it makes your job easier, yet alone the goalie, Lindsey Darby, mm -hmm. who hasn't seen much work in this one. Like Darian's just got different levels of defense, and they don't even use all of them in some mm -hmm. matches. Yeah, it seems like they're <laughs> the level of defense that gets the most use happens to be the midfield, which also plays a major role on offense. And that's something that this uh, Darian midfield has been stellar all season. You're seeing some of the younger players, Katie Walsh coming in, a sophomore. She subbed in last year for the FCAC playoffs. Hope Hapgood, another sophomore. So this is the future of Blue Wave field hockey. Once the Reina Johnses and the Ashley and Tori Stockdales, Blake Wilkes graduate, this is who Mo Minikis will be leading with in a couple of years, and it's good to see, some, see them get some playing time here in the regular season. Without question. Plus you got another one, Annabelle Adams, another sophomore, first year on the team. And the same thing for Fairfield Ludlow, using some of the underclassmen and, you know, giving them some experience going into next year, a team that is relatively young and is on the up, upcoming for the Falcons. And there might be a good program up at Taft Field in a couple of years for Fairfield Ludlow. Yeah. Yeah, this is a pretty young team. Kari and I were discussing a lot of juniors. And then you also see multiple freshmen and sophomores on the team as well, including some sophomores who have gotten significant playing time today. So definitely an up and coming team, as you, as you said. And that's a coach's best friend right there. If you can get a freshman, put them on the varsity team, develop them out for a couple of years, give them experience. By the time they're juniors and seniors and have two years of varsity experience under their belt, they can then lead the new younger players and really build a winning culture. And it's a reason that teams like Darianne, New Canaan, and Wilton have been so dominant for so long. It's because they get these players, they start training them when they're freshmen, build them up to be the varsity star of their senior year, and repeat the process. Absolutely. And you do got to give a big credit on that one to Kari Johns with the JV team. Mm -hmm, getting those, certainly. Getting those players tested for Mo Minikis on the varsity team. And it's one of the most dominant JV teams on campus mm -hmm. with girls lacrosse. They only lose once every couple of years. And it really shows you the volumes of the talent and the coaching that Darian has in this program. Especially being led by a legend like Kari, who is, we get the pleasure of having her analysis on here every week, which... She knows a lot more about field hockey than you and I do. That's for sure. That is true, and it's definitely, I, I mean, it's, I, I think it's the viewer's experience today. I don't have the same knowledge as she does, but the level of knowledge that she brings of this sport is truly impeccable, and it really enhances the broadcast. We can't thank Kari enough, and she's truly a mastermind when she's on that sideline mm -hmm. coaching. Absolutely. Ten minutes to go in this game. Ten minutes more to burn for Darian until they finish their season undefeated as they will have an attack penalty corner here. It looks like it'll be Walsh to insert. Finds Johns on the outside. Johns sending it towards the middle. Rebound shot and a goal for the Wave. Tough to tell who that one was. Number nine, nonetheless. I also find it interesting on that one that Darian's taking this opportunity to run some new plays, try some new strategies on it. That shorter pass off to Johns and... I think that was number one for Darianne, who was finishing off the goal. So Adams picking it up. But still, uh, not your typical strategy you see. Normally you see the insert to the top of the circle. That time a shorter pass to John, sending it on net. But those are the plays you need to run if you want to make a run late in the state tournament or in the FCAC tournament. And it's good that Darian's getting some experience in that in a game like this. Yeah, Darian's really taking this game as an opportunity to test out some of those other plays. We usually see them using the same two or three strategies on the uh, attack penalty corners, but 
It seems like they've switched it up a little bit today. They've taken this lead. You've got some insurance. Nothing to worry about. You can take risks, plus that back line of defense, which doesn't come into use often. Yeah, it's very true. And darian has been a stellar season for them. You mentioned only the few goals they've given up this year. And they just got to keep putting the pedal to the metal come the postseason, come the FCAC tournament, come the state tournament. They're definitely hungry after how they ended it last year, losing in a shootout to Wilton over at Testa Field in Norwalk. And that was a game that Wilton came in as the 11th seed. So they... <laughs> Got blood. They got upset by them. You know, they got revenge on their Warriors in the regular season, but I think they definitely want some title to bring back here to Daring End High School this season. Now, Braden, I'll ask you this because obviously they're going to be undefeated going into the postseason. You think that scares a coach a little bit? These players haven't experienced a loss quite yet this season. They haven't really been scared too much. The closest game that they've had was that Greenwich game where they started down 1 0, but they came back and, and won that one pretty swiftly. Do you think that? without the experience of losing during the regular season, you don't really have that fear to drive you, just that, just the confidence of constant winning and maybe an expectation that they're going to win a game, or do you think they, they understand the task ahead and that it's only going to be harder come postseason? You know, I think it's kind of a little bit of yes and no. I mean, it's one of the toughest things for any team to do to go into a postseason undefeated, but when you have a head coach like Mo Minikis who's been doing this for so long and has had so many dominant teams, you kind of get used to that feeling and know how to train the team to go in with an undefeated record. Last year, they weren't as lucky. They did fall to New Canaan in the regular season, which I guess brought them that motivation in the FCAC championship. But mm -hmm. I definitely think it's something Garen's going to keep in mind, and I think it's something that head coach Mo Minikis, now I think in 30-plus years with Darian, she has experience in, so she'll be looking to uh, bring that insight to her team and getting them ready because that's the thing is it doesn't matter how good you play in the regular season, but you got to end it with a piece of hardware if you're yep. this good. Seven and a half minutes now. Left in this one, nine nothing. Our score, eight and six. Fairfield Ludlow Falcons. Their record will be going to eight and seven after this one. They were, they were coming into this game the clear underdog, doing their best to possibly get three games over 500. And said they'll drop down to just one, but still hope for them to get into the FCAC playoffs. Yeah, it is indeed. Which seems likely. Last season, they uh, they finished at 500. Not sure about the out of conference, so it's still a good year for this Lodo team to finish above 500 and get that FCAC playoff berth. They'll be playing in the state playoffs as well, so mm -hmm. still a good you know year for the program. And they're going to get some more games under their belt, which everyone likes to see. And just looking ahead at the matchups, I think one game that definitely draws my eye: Staples and New Canaan. The four or five seeds, and the winner of that would yep. have a date with Darian in the FCAC semifinals. <laughs> so that would be one amazing semifinal. They. Uh, Blue Wave went to the Staples and took down the records, I think, 4 nothing, 3 nothing, And then they did the same when you came in, 3 nothing. So Dominance they, over both of yeah. those teams. So, But again, it's postseason field mm, hockey. It you certainly never is. Know. It's a different game. It's a different game come postseason. You always see, like last year with that Wilton team during the state championship, a team that maybe you wouldn't expect to be as good in the playoffs to you know, have some new life, some, some new energy, and, and really bring it. And, and Darien's the team that you want to take it to as well. They've got the target on their back. Clear number one seed, clear number one team in Connecticut, and undefeated. And field hockey is a game of momentum, and especially when you're like Wilton last year, when you can hold Darien's offense at bay for that long, it gets you motivated. You play through double overtime, still no goals. You go into that shootout, you're hungry. And I think it's a big thing, even with that Greenwich game, that the Cardinals go up one nothing. They're playing with that advantage, and it took Darien until the second half to take the lead in that mm -hmm. one. So they definitely have shown some signs of weakness with that, and it's mm -hmm. big big part of who scores first and Darian getting that early you know in the head space of they have the lead they can play more relaxed compared to an opposition that needs to come back and potentially protect the lead yeah up until that Greenwich game it, you, Darian's never really had to have that sense of urgency this entire season they've been dominant they've been on offense the entire game they've had nothing to worry about but that that Greenwich game was maybe they started to feel the pressure a little bit come second half and obviously they were they were able to come out with the win at the end and, and continue on with their season. Then getting a win, 10 nothing against Danbury. Actually, I believe that was that was before the Greenwich game or after. I've I mean, nonetheless, Greenwich has a talented team. I think they've got Muffleman up there who is just an unbelievable field hockey player. And I'm really interested to see what she does in the FCAC quarterfinals because Greenwich is a team that's actually going to be playing on the road this season with the 9-3, 0-1 oh, record. So I believe they're going to Richfield and Tiger Hollow, which should be a good match. And that's another good semifinal. Richfield and Wilton, potentially the two three seeds. Both of those teams have had good years. And uh, again, they'll be battling it out at Casa Grand Field potentially next week for an FCAC title. Four and a half left. 
now in this one as Ludlow's trying to put some pressure on, maybe score a late goal. At this point in the game, down 9 nothing. The goal for them is probably don't get shut out or don't give up 10 goals because Darien is just such a challenging team to beat. There are only a, a few teams that seem capable of, of holding down the wave so far this season. And even they have failed the best of the teams in Connecticut so far. I have indeed, and I'm actually looking over at the Darien goal right now. It looks like they did make a goalkeeper change for this fourth quarter. Even though they both were number 22, I do think it's Charlotte Kaiser who entered play in this fourth quarter. Going to get some time, or at least I see Lindsey Darby on the sideline mm -hmm. out of this one. So again, I'm 90% sure that's Kaiser in the net for Darien, who will be the starter next year for Darien. Good to yep. get her some experience, and especially in a game like this where you're going to give Ludlow potentially some opportunities to take some, sh take some shots, give the goalkeeper a chance to make some saves so that you're going into next year with some minutes under your belt. Yeah, this is Lindsey Darby's first year starting for the Blue Wave, and she hasn't had to deal with much trouble so far. And I mean, it's her first year starting, but I do think that she saw a lot of time last year with mm -hmm. Grace Ledoux. Definitely. They kind of split the half and half, and she actually played that SEAC semifinal, so she saw time in the big games, and so it wasn't really her first time seeing time She's in She's not new in to that. the spotlight. Yeah, and I definitely think that it comes up big when you play a team like Staples or New Canaan or Richfield, when they take those shots on you and they pepper, pepper you on those penalty corners to make the save after save, and... Again, I think it really speaks volume to how good this Darien defense is and how good the goalkeeping is. Absolutely. And, I mean, Darien's had a long history of goalkeepers, starting with Monisha back, I think, on our freshman year. Then you had Ledoux who took over, then Darby, and now handing the torch off to Kaiser. So Darien's always been a little bit reward, rewarded in that category of having talented goalkeepers protecting the pipes. Walsh carrying it up. Finds half good along the sideline. She'll look down, taken away by a Ludlow player, turned back up field now by Perry. I think the other big thing, Dylan, is looking at this Darian team. This is a team that Moment of Kiss assembled when these seniors were freshmen. She saw the talent with Raina Johns and uh, Benoit and Flanagan Hapgood and really just assembled them when they were freshmen. I mean, Raina Johns scored a goal in the FCAC Championship her freshman year, mm -hmm. so built that. And then by the time they became seniors, this team truly has been a behemoth of a team and again I think it's something that it's almost like this four-year plan that Moment of Kiss has had and now Absolutely. it's paying off as Darian's undefeated and nobody's really seemed besides Greenwich nobody's really seemed to give them a run for their money. The seniors and juniors this year are, are both very talented classes and we can see it with the the number of commits in both grades. Darian the senior class obviously Raina Johns the the best player of that senior class without question off the Dartmouth and They've even got a few players on the bench who are committed as well, which just, you know, I think that just tells you how good this team really is. You've got committed players who aren't even getting playing time until until the second half when the team team's up a lot of goals. And then that, that junior class as well is extremely strong with Wilkes to Cornell as well as uh, Ashley Stockdale to Duke. I was just going to say that Lindsay Turner, who just had that opportunity for Darianne, she's a senior who for most teams would be one of their star players on the offense, but a team like Darianne doesn't see much time, but she's a good depth player for Darianne to have and to come in late in games, and I think she's been doing a great job, scored tonight, and is a big part that Darianne's 9-0 because they have the depth. They don't just have the 10, 11 starters out there, but they have more on the bench that can come in and be just as talented, just as good, and just as tr much just as much trouble for the opposition. Because we see the even the backups, and now they haven't given up any goals as, as time starts to tick down in this one. This is a good opportunity for Ludlow here to get the penalty corner offense going, and something they've only seen two or three penalty corners in this one, which this is really your bread and butter here if you want to score some goals. Absolutely. We'll see what happens here as time ticks down in this game. The Falcons' last chance at sticking a goal. Braden, I don't think you and I will be on the mic together until the high school game day pregame show, the precursor to the Turkey Bowl coming up in a few weeks. So this game comes to an end. Braden, thanks for coming on for the fourth quarter, making it interesting, giving some insight to the rest of the field hockey uh, FC Ack and, and about this team as a whole. It's a pleasure as always. Can't wait to be back on the mic with you in a few weeks. And thank Should you so fun. much for tuning in, everyone at home. DAF Media, of course, a joint venture of the Darian Foundation and Darian Athletic Foundation. Braden, you were on the crew today. Why don't you shout them out? 
Yeah, we've got a very talented crew here today. A lot of underclassmen stepping up big. Leon Chen, Will Eriks, Ben Y. Chulis, Lucy Best on her first stream, doing a great job on our graphics. So definitely some talented DAF meters. DAF Medi media members. Up media here. members. <laughs> oh, I'll try to make it a verb. I don't know. Up here <laughs> in the booth, doing a great job. Damien Andrew, of course, overseeing this entire operation. Dylan, fun coming on the broadcast with you, announcing the last 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, that's Glad it. having you on. Darian finished their season 16-0 with a 9-0 win against Fairfield Ludlow. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a nice evening.